TJ Beachel, co-founder and lead technician of NEAT, Next Era Audio Technologies. Today I'm here with one of my clients, 21 Pilots, and I'm really excited to have Sweetwater Sound with us. Uh, I've been using Sweetwater to supply equipment for the 21 Pilots tours and their studios for the past 10 years, and the rig here is no exception. Uh, today we're gonna be breaking this rig down on a component level, and we're gonna bring Coley Bolin, the playback engineer for 21 Pilots, to explain how we deploy this on stage and how Josh Dunn, drummer from 21 Pilots, controls the rig from his drum riser. Okay, so let's talk about what is playback and what do these playback rigs do. Uh, specifically on this tour, with the 21 Pilots tour, we have several parts of the show where there's full band or it's just Josh and Tyler on stage. Our playback rig at that point will cover the backing tracks that are necessary for a full production with only limited you know, band members on stage. If it's only Tyler and Josh, then we're going to use backing tracks to fill in the other parts that aren't happening live in front of you. Uh, more importantly, what we're also doing with the playback rig is offering cues, all of the count-ins and all of the information to help the artists go stage left, stage right, give them their positions and help them move along with their transitions so they don't have to try to remember things every single night. And then also with this rig specifically is we run SMPTE time code inside of our playback uh, session and that SMPTE time code is what is sent out to the LD, our lighting director, so his console can lock in for video. It's sent off to Pyro to make sure that all of the fire and concussions go off at a very strategic time and it is also also sent to camera cues so cameras can go off and pick up the right moments at the right time. Every rig is different. Uh, again, I've been with 21 Pilots for 10 years now and this is probably the fourth rig and rendition that we've made for them. Every single band has a different rig for their needs, but conceptually the idea is that you have two computers running either backing tracks, cues, time code, or general information, and then you have two of those computers running the same tracks at the same time, and what the system is doing is if it detects a failure, it flips it to the second computer, so there's no audible latency, there's no pops, there's no way of the crowd knowing that we had a failure in a mission critical application of the show. All right, let's break this rig down on a component level. We've got two sources of power. We've got the Furman on top and the battery backup on the bottom. If we were to lose power, we have redundant power to every piece. So if we lose power, we're covered for 30 minutes to recover and figure out what went wrong. This is my favorite piece, the neat rack. It's just a rack blank. <laughs> Uh, let's go over the RMEs. RME is a company that we've had. RME has always been incredibly consistent, rock solid, and fantastic conversion. Um, we're MADI based, so we're not converting to analog on this specific rig. We do have other rigs that have the Ferrofish A32 on it to convert to analog if we're somewhere where we don't have a console or if we're doing TV broadcast. The RMEs are unique in a sense too that I can actually mult via multiple outputs. So we have 32 channels of playback, and then what I do is I send the second up to 64 channels, the second bank of 32 channels is then sent to the second switcher. So as we cover redundancy, just understand that this rig is dual redundant. The Mo2, this is just working in preset nine is a MIDI split. Anything that we have coming from Josh's SPDSX or anything from a control standpoint on stage, it is uh, sent into the Mo2 and then spit out via every output. So anything that comes into the input is then split to multiple outputs and um, that allows us so we can have both computers receiving the same MIDI signal at the same time. These two boxes here are uh, direct outputs, uh, Xbox BLDS, it's buffer loop detection system. Buffer loop detection system is basically pink noise, but it's an embedded code, a proprietary thing for the Xbox. If you're not familiar with uh, Xbox's products, it's the same thing as what you're seeing down here with the radial SW8, but instead of working in analog, we're using uh, MADI. Uh, just to do our Rivage consoles and everything that we're using is all MADI digitally based. Uh, and as I had already mentioned, we have two of them because channels one through 32 get sent to primary box A, and then the second channels 32 through 64 get sent to the second box. So if our switchers fail, the switches in itself is dually redundant. The SW8 is actually connected from a redundant standpoint for the distriplizers. Our time code uh, is sent off to our video walls, pyro, and cameras, and that is also embedded into our session. Below that, just simply have a rack shelf, and then again, we've already addressed the, the battery backup. Um, let's go ahead and take you around back, and I'll show you what we've got going on behind the rig. The back of the rack doesn't have too much going on, but I just wanted to give a shout out to Zane at Jumpers. Uh, Jumpers has been a great partner with us and 21 Pilots over the years. Every cable that we use on this tour on any rigs that I deploy comes from Jumpers, and we also do custom-made back panels. He basically takes all of the inputs and outputs of everything that we need and, and customizes panels for us so we have a clean and easy setup every night. Hi, I'm Coley Bolton, uh, playback engineer for 21 Pilots. Uh, what we have here is two MacBook Pros running Ableton Live 11 suite. Um, running dual redundant. Um, we're using Strange Electronics uh, set list plugin for ease of you know, change of set list from night to night and also 
It's very streamlined with uh, different arrangements that we change throughout the tour. We're also sending time code out of uh, Ableton to sync lighting, visuals, and all that good stuff. I actually only hit play during the whole show three times. Josh, the drummer, he controls most of the show with a foot switch that's plugged into an SPSX by Roland. And uh, he also has an iPad on stage that he mirrors playback from his world. So I designed the session uh, with Josh uh, right before this tour. They used to use uh, session view, but we switched them over to arrangement view. Um, it's a lot easier to drop in you know, audio cues for them and different kind of clicks for them so that way they can stay in time with the tracks, as well as adjusting time code if that need, needs be, adjusting levels of tracks. And also he's running his drum samples in here. So any drum samples that you hear him playing on like rolling pads or anything like that, they're coming from our world as well.